yes, we're trying to destroy cancer cells, but we don't want to destroy the cells that we need. We don't want to destroy our immune system that we need to heal the body. So I want to talk about an alternative treatment that is getting a lot of attention these days, but it's been discovered that this actually has some really good anti-cancer properties. Here's another really interesting thing beyond cancer, fenbendazole shows potential in treating pulmonary fibrosis as well. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Judy Morgan, and today we're going to cover a topic that is so scary for everyone, and that's the big C. Cancer is affecting more and more and more humans and animals. And frankly, we haven't made great strides in treatment. We'd like to think we are, but when we look at the statistics of the number of people dying from cancer, the number of dogs and cats dying from cancer every year, we're not making great strides. So there are a lot of alternative treatments. Obviously I am into integrative medicine and I like to look at alternative treatments as well as traditional treatments. And I'm really not a big fan of the slash burn destroy cell cells in our body. Yes, we're trying to destroy cancer cells, but we don't want to destroy the cells that we need. We don't want to destroy our immune system that we need to heal the body. So I want to talk about an alternative treatment that is getting a lot of attention these days. And it all started with a man by the name of Joe Tippins in England quite a few years back who cured himself from stage four lung cancer using sheep dewormer. That's fenbendazole. Fenbendazole has a lot of breakdown products, one of which is mebendazole. So fenbendazole and mebendazole, sheep dewormer. Uh, and it's not just for sheep, it's used in cattle, it's used in horses, it's used in dogs, it's sometimes used in cats. That's what we have typically thought about it being used for. But it's been discovered that this actually has some really good anti-cancer properties. So I'm gonna give you a couple of testimonials from some of our clients we asked for people who have used fenbendazole in a cancer protocol for their pets. So I've got some testimonials. And then we're gonna talk about some studies that have been done in humans and in animals, sort of some effectiveness and I'm not gonna give you any treatment protocols. That's not my job to do. I'm not going to tell you this is the cure-all, be-all, end-all. I'm just going to tell you that it might be something to consider if you have an animal who has been diagnosed with cancer, consider would this be something that could be added to the protocol. So I'm gonna start with a few testimonials. This person says, I started my dog on fenbendazole from Happy Healer brand back in May. He had an anal gland tumor and lymph node removed. At the time, it was questionable as to if there was possible spread to the lungs, but unknown. In September, x-rays did show nodules in the lungs, so that was from May to September, but he's had zero signs of anything wrong until recently, so now we're in February, so we're almost a year in. Uh, he had some choking and breathing issues and went to the ER. The doctor found a mass in his neck, likely pushing on the trachea. X-rays showed progression of the nodules to the lungs, but being almost five months since the last x-rays, they were slightly surprised it wasn't worse and he's doing okay now. There's another one. My dog was diagnosed on January January 2nd of 2023 with oral melanoma. That's usually a really quick disaster. Surgery performed on February 1st of 23 to remove the growth on the lower lip, lip and the lymph node on the left side of his neck followed an integrated protocol using fenbendazole when it appeared to have spread to his lung. He's now 25 to 26 months post-diagnosis and remains in remission. He's 14 and still healthy and active. That's amazing. His oral melanoma, my mother's dog died of that uh, two dogs ago. This one says, my great Dane in August of 23 had a tumor on the roof of his mouth. Conventional veterinary said nothing could be done and go home and love on him as much as you can because in her opinion, these types of tumors in the mouth grow fast. That day I reached out to a holistic veterinarian and was able to get him seen the next day. She put him on Chinese herbs, fenbendazole, and chaga mushrooms. I was already transitioning to fresh, lightly cooked food. She said to stop adding kibble and go all fresh. Yay. He also has had uh, weekly acupuncture and Yunnan Bial for an episode of bleeding throughout the next several months. We saw this tumor shrinking. I took photos to document it. About four months later, the tumor resolved and has not returned. He was also on Renovite with CBD and CBD Dog Health Horse Ease. 
amazing. We haven't been able to find good studies in dogs, but Dr. Doug English, an Australian veterinarian, has been collecting animal cancer cases to research, evaluate, and track the health progress of animals on his turmeric dog bites. So curcumin is uh, another herb, it's found in turmeric, that is widely used to help treat cancer. This is a um, study called Anti-Cancer Research from 2024. And the title is Oral Fenbendazole for Cancer Therapy in Humans and Animals. Given the low cost of fenbendazole, its high safety profile, accessibility, and unique anti-proliferative activities, fenbendazole would be the preferred benzimidazole, that's the group of compounds, to treat cancer. And what it does is it inhibits glycolysis, which is an uh, energy pattern in the body, down-regulates sugar glucose uptake, so sugar brings sugar down. We know that cancer cells feed on sugar and induces oxidative stress, enhance apoptosis, which is the bursting of cancer cells. However, it is fairly poorly absorbed. One of the things that we found in one study, it says that if it is given along with olive oil, which is high in oleic acid, that helps with the absorption. So it'd be a good idea to pair the two together, which is easy to do with our animals because we could throw that tablespoon of olive oil into their food as well as the fenbendazole at the same time and get better absorption. It's shown good uh, efficacy in cancer cells that are have become resistant to chemotherapy. So here's a study in lung cancer. I think these are uh, human. 50% tumor inhibition induced cell cycle arrest non-small cell lung cancer, significant reduction in number of tumor cell colonies, reduction of tumor size and weight, confirmation of microtubule disruption, and cell cycle arrest. Non-small cell lung cancer, tumor growth inhibition, and bursting of the cancer cells uh, resulting in cancer cell death, demonstrated cytotoxicity toward tumor cells, but non-toxicity to normal cells. So this is great. It's selective for the cancer cells. It causes them to rupture, but not the normal cells. Cervical cancer, fenbendazole inhibited tumor colony formation and induced cell rupture and arrest. It was more toxic to HeLa cells. Remember, those are the ones that have been studied for years, uh, and less toxic to normal cells. Colorectal cancer, triggered cancer cell bursting. Colorectal cancer, cancer, another study, triggered cancer cell rupture. Lymphoma, tumor growth inhibition was higher in mice administered fenbendazole with a vitamin supplement, a diet. So this is really interesting. Joe Tippins, his protocol included vitamin E supplements, curcumin, and CBD oil along with the fenbendazole. And there was a couple studies in here where it showed that if the mice had a vitamin supplemented diet, that the fenbendazole was even more effective. Leukemia caused cancer cell rupture. In as little as three days, it caused leukemia cells to convert to granulocytes, which are white blood cells, and induced cell rupture. At 72 hours, fenbendazole exhibited 14.5-fold selectivity in killing the HeLa cells over healthy human bone marrow stem cells. Hepatocellular carcinoma, that's liver cancer, growth suppression in cancer cells, induced rupture of the tumor cells. Breast cancer, anti-proliferative activity induced cell cycle arrest. Another breast, breast cancer study, cytotoxicity toward tumors and high tumor inhibition. It reduces sugar up, or glucose uptake in cancer cells. A little science for you. Under anaerobic conditions, glycolysis produces lactate, which increases acidification in the tumor microenvironment and leads to the chemotherapy drug resistance. Metabolic disturbances such as glutamine overuse further enhance glycolysis, creating a feedback loop for tumor growth. Fenbendazole has been found to inhibit glucose uptake, resulting in reduced lactate levels. Thus, it ser can serve as a viable treatment for drug-resistant cancer cells. Glucose or sugar, a primary energy source for tumor cells, is metabolized through glycolysis and delivered across the cell membrane via a GLUT1 transporter. Unlike normal cells, cancer cells perform glycolysis to metabolize glucose to lactate, even under aerobic conditions. The GLUT1 transporter has been highly expressed in 99% of patients with squamous cell carcinoma and 50% of patients with adenocarcinoma 
trauma. Fenbendazole inhibits that transporter expression and prevents sugar uptake in the cancer cells. Through targeting these cycles, fenbendazole can lead to cancer cell starvation and reverse drug resistance, aiding cancer treatment. Remember, these are human studies. In addition to glycolysis inhibition, fenbendazole induces apoptosis or rupture of cancer cells. When administered orally, fenbendazole induces cytotoxicity and effectively blocks cancer cell growth. It causes oxidative stress and inhibits cancer cell proliferation and enhances cell rupture. It reduces toxicity to normal cells while maintaining its anti-cancer effects of impairing energy metabolism and restraining cancer cell migration and invasion. Here's another really interesting thing. Beyond cancer, fenbendazole shows potential in treating pulmonary fibrosis as well. Those of you with Westies who are prone to pulmonary fibrosis, we recommend using PEA because that has been studied very heavily for that. But here's something else that you might be able to add to the protocol that could be helpful. Fenbendazole undergoes partial absorption in the liver where it is rapidly metabolized into the mebendazole and the oxbendazole. Then it's excreted in the feces and the urine. It is very poorly absorbed, so that's where the olive oil comes in. In animals, fenbendazole demonstrated a high safety margin and low toxicity. A safety profile study administering it to cattle found that it was well tolerated even when administered at six times the prescribed dose and three times the recommended duration. In rodents, so mice and rats, the lethal dose exceeded 10 grams per kilogram, which is a thousand times the therapeutic level. Lifetime studies in rats indicate no maternal or reproductive toxicity and no carcinogenesis, so it doesn't cause cancer. We've got a whole bunch more studies. These were studies looking at how do we improve the absorption of fenbendazole because you only absorb a very small part of it when you take it. So they looked at adding nanoparticles or combining it with DMSO or combining it with supplementary vitamins. So vitamin A, D3, E, K3, so that's the fat soluble vitamins, B1, B2, B6, B12, folate, niacin, panathenic acid, and biotin. The mice that were treated with the vitamin supplemented diet exhibited significant inhibition of tumor growth and additionally taking it with food may increase its absorption. This is human cases, 83 year old male patient stage four, Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. The first six months he took fenbendazole and then adjusted the doses and had to dose down. And at nine months had repeated PET scan and CT scan and showed improvement in the lymph node swelling. Months 10, 11, and 12 continued tapering down the fenbendazole and another PET CT scan revealed further improvement with no new lesions noted. Whether this improvement is directly related to fenbendazole or other factors remains uncertain. 63-year-old male, high-grade kidney carcinoma, Patient initiated fenbendazole due to side effects of immunotherapy, so he was also taking chemotherapy, and he couldn't take them because of the side effects, so they used fenbendazole as an alternate treatment, and an interval MRI revealed nearly complete resolution of the left kidney mass and a decrease in lesions in the spine and pancreas. It significantly reduced the tumor size, no reported side effect, and no new lesions observed for 10 months. And that was just using fenbendazole. 72-year-old male, high-grade urothelial carcinoma, so that's a urinary tract cancer. He started on all kinds of normal treatment, you know, normal uh, chemotherapy, then added fenbendazole and serial CTs for nine months showed a decrease in tumor size achieving a complete radiographic response. 63-year-old female, same cancer, started taking all kinds of chemo and then fenbendazole, and it effectively decreased the tumor size. Patient remains on surveillance with no disease progression. Here's a 80-year-old uh, female with non-small cell lung cancer with brain mets. She developed liver dysfunction on the fenbendazole and had to stop taking it. Despite numerous success stories use, using fenbendazole, repurposing it for cancer treatment remains non-suggested by conventional medical institutions and oncologists. Clinical trials should be funded and performed to promote the possible application as an inexpensive, well-characterized, and widely available anti-cancer -ther therapeutic in animals and humans. Potential effect of mebendazole, which is one of the metabolites, so they can be used interchangeably. We have studies showing uh, inhibiting cancer cell growth in thyroid, gastrointestinal, breast, prostate, pancreatic, ovarian, colorectal, 
cervical melanoma, head and neck, leukemia, and bile duct cancer, and is non-toxic to normal cells. That's a lot, folks. That's really a lot. There's a lot of different places that you can get fenbendazole. I would recommend if, if you or a family member or a pet has a cancer diagnosis, ask questions about possibly using fenbendazole. Find an integrative doctor, an integrative veterinarian who might be able to help guide you on this path. There are some really good groups on social media with doctors that discuss this. Personally, I think this is amazing. I wish we had known all this information a long time ago. It could have helped some family members, but hey, uh, you don't know what you don't know. So we're just putting information out there for people to be able to investigate a little bit. I got down, started down this line because I'm in that age group where a lot of my friends are having cancer scares and cancer diagnosis and being who we are and not wanting to use chemotherapy and radiation and major surgeries. And sometimes, you know, going down a path where it, we're told there are no other alternatives. Let's start looking for alternatives because maybe there's something out there that could help. You never know.